Struan Stevenson, Conservative MEP for Scotland. With the sign-off of the Common Fisheries Policy, what difference are Scottish fishermen now going to start seeing? Well, there's going to be a huge difference. We have uh, been saying for years that the fisheries sector has been bedeviled by micromanagement from Brussels, by an army of bureaucrats sitting in an office in Brussels introducing almost on a daily basis new rules, new regulations that have virtually destroyed the, the fisheries uh, sector. The key principles engaged in the uh, common fisheries policy reform uh, have been to end the discards debacle where one and a half million tonnes of perfectly good fish was being dumped over the side every year. The fishermen hated doing that. It was the Brussels bureaucrats that insisted on it. If you caught out of quota fish or undersized fish and tried to land them, you would have been charged with a criminal offence. The fishermen had no option but to dump that stuff. Well, we're stopping all that. We're going to pay money to fishermen to improve the gear they use to try and avoid catching these fish in the first place. Leaving them alive in the sea is much more important uh, than any fish that they do inadvertently catch that are undersized, out of quota. They will land and they will be processed for fish meal and fish oil and the money uh, that the fishermen get will compensate them for landing them and for the fuel that they use in, in the, the process. We also have the other big breakthrough in this reform that will be a major uh, significant impact for Scottish fishermen. Regionalisation, giving back day-to-day -day control of fisheries, management on a day-to-day -day basis to the stakeholders, to the fishermen, the scientists in the member states. And in Scotland, that means you know the Scottish producer organisations and the fishermen themselves taking away control from Brussels albeit within a framework set by Brussels and it's up to the member states to ensure compliance. If they fail to comply with the framework, then Brussels has the right to claw back control. There is the best incentive for fishermen in future to behave. Now I want to pick up uh, both those points on really how achievable they're going to be in practice. So first of all, on that issue of regionalisation, um, Given that the member state is the UK and not Scotland, how much power is actually going to be uh, devolved in practice down to a Scottish level? Well, because the majority of the whitefish fleet in the whole of the United Kingdom is in Scotland, the great majority of fish landings are in Scottish ports, then of course it would make uh, no sense at all for uh, London to m maintain uh, a grasp of the day-to-day -day management priorities under this regionalisation proposal. So, of course, it will be devolved to Edinburgh, and Edinburgh will devolve it down even to the uh, producer organisations in Fraserburgh, Peterhead and the other major ports. So it's going to make a big difference. And then on discards, how achievable is that going to be? There's a timetable uh, laid out for different types of species year on year. Some of the easier pelagic stocks at first from January 2015, the really tricky ones like the whitefish, the mixed fisheries after that. How do we, how's that going to be achieved, do you think? Well, therein lies the real problem, and that's going to be very difficult to achieve because still fishermen are being told, you know, you can't catch juvenile fish, but they will now have a new system. If they find that they're uh, hauling in juvenile fish, they immediately will report it, they'll move out of that area, give these juvenile fish time to uh, mature, because that's what we want. We don't want to be landing juvenile fish and making them into fish meal and fish oil. We'll be improving their gear so that more of the young fish can escape. And we'll be looking at a swap system so that if you run out of quota, you'll very quickly be able to swap quota with another fisherman that's got a surplus. So we're trying our hardest to overcome the difficulties that certainly exist in the mixed fishery. And we have a very limited time to achieve that. First January 2016, we have to have this ban in place. I mean, you sound fairly upbeat about the common fisheries policy overall. Is that a fair assessment? Are you uh, happy with at least the direction this is headed? I, honestly, after years of work on this, I am feeling very optimistic, very positive. I hear from the fishermen that they have never in their careers, and some of them fishing for the last 30 or 40 years, have never seen 
cod stocks in the North Sea so buoyant. They've never seen haddock stocks so strong. I think all of the suffering we've had in the past is going to be uh, history and I think there's going to be a good future for those fishermen that have stuck it out and uh, have you know, kept a, a, a straight and narrow course. Just a final question. The Scottish Fishermen's Federation have said this afternoon that uh, improbable and impossible has been enshrined into law within this common fisheries policy. They're not convinced that everything in there, like discards, like regionalisation, is actually going to work in, in practice. Uh, I suppose that what happens now, how it's applied in reality, is going to be the, the, the test of the, the pudding. Well, I've worked very closely with uh, all the big producer organisations during the course of these years of uh, getting this reform package on the table. I think I have to quote uh, Maggie Thatcher to them, don't bring me problems, bring me solutions.